What's up everyone? This is Bill with BLR Tuning. Today I got a little quick unboxing video for you guys. This is just going to be an unboxing. I'm going to show you what you'll get in the package here. This is the WBCX for the Can-Am Riker. This is uh, going to be SKU number WBPV25-1. I'll put it up on the display there, up on the screen. Uh, this is going to be $349.99. Uh, this is going to require you to have the Power Vision. So on the Can-Am Riker, that is PV3-25-11. This is going to give you an air-to-fuel ratio readout on the display on your PV3. So if you're someone that has your PV3 mounted to your vehicle, this would give you a proper air-to-fuel ratio readout. Um, it will require a O2 sensor bung welded into the exhaust. There is exhaust on the market that have that already installed. So we'll take a look in the box. So again, this is going to require the Dynojet PV3. This is my PV3. It's in the aluminum case. Uses a GoPro style mount. Hey, the aluminum case is about 100 bucks. PV3 is about 400. Okay, again, that's PV3 part number PV3 25 11. You can find that on uh, Dynojet's website. And then uh, directly from Dynojet, this is the WBCX. So wideband CX, single channel module. Okay, so this is the module itself. These back here is where your six wire Bosch O2 sensor is gonna connect to. Okay, so we'll go over everything and how it operates. So the first thing you're gonna need here is your diagnostics port plug. This is gonna replace the plug that would have came with the PV3. So this now plugs into the diagnostics port instead, and it then comes with this adapter at the end of it, which plugs into the WBCX. So this is gonna plug into the WBCX. Okay, makes sense so far. Okay, I'm gonna move the box aside, I'll lay everything out here for you. So there is our diagnostics plug. Here's our WBCX. Okay. This one here. This one? This. This is going to go plugged into the PV3 at this end. So you have a, por a port here on the back. Scoop the line on. There we go. This plug will go in like so. This little rubber plug plugs up the USB port. That's how you would plug it into your computer. Okay, so like so, it's got a little tab you squeeze and it releases. So that's gonna plug into our PV3, and then at this end, plugs into our WBCX. So now we have diagnostics port to WBCX, WBCX to PV3. So now our diagnostics, our PV, or WBCX, is now in line with our PV3. And then you have this harness here has six wires and they are all color coordinated and they will plug into the side here. So you need a small flathead screwdriver and you'll be loosening those up and plugging each wire in, starting with this blue one, just working your way down one at a time and screwing these flathead screws back down tight. And that will give you this plug. This end will go to your wideband O2 sensor. So you will now have this plug. This goes to your wideband O2 sensor right here. It'll only fit one way, goes down, squeeze tight, locks in. Hey, water resistant plug. Here's our wideband O2 sensor. This wideband O2 sensor is a very sensitive unit. Don't drop it, don't damage it. This is gonna go into a O2 sensor bung in your exhaust pipe. It is not going to replace your factory O2 sensor. 
Okay, so you're gonna have your factory O2 sensor at your header. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll put a little screenshot up here. And this is going to go after that. They always say after, so after the header pipe, before the cat and everything, if you still have a cat on your bike, you should be O2 sensor. I'll put a screenshot up here. I'll put a photo up here on screen right now. And that photo is showing you what it looks like with this O2 sensor bung plugged into the exhaust pipe on a welded on O2 sensor bung. Okay. Okay. Also in the package, you will get a little bag here. This is an O2 sensor bung. This gets welded into the exhaust and then this threads into it. So it does come with this. If your exhaust doesn't have one, you could take it to a, uh, you could take it to any local exhaust shop. Just mark where you want to have this installed. You need to have it at an angle. So if moisture gets on this O2 sensor, you wouldn't want it at an angle going downward. So you wouldn't want your O2 sensor sitting like this at a downward angle if that was the pipe. You would want it sitting at least 20 degrees upward or you know somewhere in there. And that is because if any moisture from inside the exhaust gets on the tip of this guy, it can drip off and not just sit in a pool on top of the O2 sensor and mess up the O2 sensor. Okay, so you'll get this stainless steel little guy there. And then you'll have this little rubber plug inside of here. This little rubber plug is to help make this guy water resistant. So once you're done, you can feed this onto here like so. Okay, and it does have a little tear off at the end because this is a universal little rubber piece they include. So you'll be cutting off that extra one. You won't need it like so. Okay, makes sense so far. Okay, and then it does have this little guy here in the kit. And all this is doing is changing this power wire pin, the red wire there, to a different pin location. For the Can-Am Riker, as of right now, from what we've seen, won't need it. Okay, this unit will work on other Can-Am models that support the PV3. So look on their website, up in the upper corner of their website, upper right hand corner, it'll say enter your vehicle information here, follow those guidelines and see if the WBCX is available. And a different one may be available for your vehicle. This one specifically works on Can-Am Riker. All models, okay? So that's what this one is for. The same part number may fit on other Can-Am vehicles. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And on other vehicles, you may need this adapter, but the Can-Am Riker, you won't need it. And you do get some little double-sided Velcro adhesive strips to mount the WBCX. Uh, you do obviously get an alcohol wipe in there as well as instructions in there. And then you got some zip ties, Dino Jet decals. So everything you need to do this job is in the box. Just remember, this requires the uh, PV3 in order to run it. So PV3 is part number PV3-25-11. WBCX is... WB-PV25-1. Okay. So anyways, that's my unboxing video, guys. Again, this is so you can have an air-to-fuel ratio readout. Um, I will have a link in the description below this video on how to properly set up a custom gauge screen on the PV3. So you can set up gauges to monitor stuff like um, requested torque, throttle position, 
engine coolant temperature, battery voltage, those types of things with the PV3. Just remember, whenever your flashing's over to your vehicle using the PV3, you don't have to leave the PV3 mounted to the vehicle. You can flash the tune over to it and be done from there. And then you can plug back in to flash it back to stock or flash a different tune file, change parts and flash new tunes, whatever. Um, if you are going to mount this unit to your vehicle, then you can add in the WBCX and that would give you a proper air to fuel ratio readout. It will also let you record a data log with AFR present. So that means air to fuel ratio as you're riding would be present in your data log. So that is the WBCX from DinoJet part number WBPV25-1 works with PV3 part number PV3-2. 25-11 okay that's my unboxing video you guys thanks for watching you can get this on dino jets website 349.99 links in the description below this video and remember 70 percent of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel so please take the time hit the subscribe button you have no idea how much it helps me out it keeps companies like dino jet and everyone else happy when they see more and more subscribers showing up to the channel Okay, thanks you guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.